forget plus IPO schedule. So essentially there are two schedules, right? For companies that could do it anyway and have a large, particularly if they have a large fan base or a large customer list, like then in that particular case, we can do what we did with Archimoto, right? Archimoto had a WR Hambrecht as their underwriter and us as their plat a funding platform and a large audience of, of enthusiasts in social media that they had built over time for their three-wheeler electric car. So they were able to do pretty nifty stuff very quickly, unusually quickly. They raised $4 million online from retail investors at the, you know, an average investment amount of about $2,000 in their Reg A Plus with us. And they raised 15 and a half million with the Hambrick underwriter doing the normal thing for an IPO. And then they listed. And they've actually, their stock price hasn't done great, but it's, it's now doing nicely. It's starting to recover because they were a long way away from having a, a car to produce. And it's tough being out there flapping in the breeze without too many major news announcements about how many cars you just sold, et cetera, et cetera. But the point being, with a large fan base, you can raise $4 million online in a Reg A Plus, which is exactly what we did with them. But in a more general case where there isn't a fan base, then even in that case, if the company chooses to take, if the company is strong enough to do their own IPO, but they choose to raise money on, uh, what I mean, if they're strong enough to do an S1 IPO, uh, but they choose to do a Reg A Plus IPO for the reasons I outlined, but they don't have a large fan base, then we're not really gonna raise $4 million in four weeks online because you just can't get the marketing that the, the advertising working efficiently, cost efficiently that fast. It just doesn't happen. You can spend megabucks inefficiently and raise a lot of money, but not 4 million in four weeks, okay? So in, the, in that more realistic scenario, then let's say that the company needs to raise $8 million online um, to fit with the expectations that they've already negotiated with or we've helped them negotiate with the underwriter. In that case, then we get the 8 million as fast as we can whilst retaining efficiency in the process, right? So that 8 million might take three months to raise. It might take four months to raise. Something of that ilk is, 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 is reasonable. And then they go to the underwriter. We, you know, we're in constant communication anyway and they do their bit which takes two and a half weeks and now we're listed, right? And the way it works in a Reg A Plus IPO is post listing, there is a series of filings that upgrade the company to full S1 level. But they're easy filings and the Reg A Plus attorney that got you into the deal in the first place that we brought you to can do that, all of that work, right? And it isn't heinously expensive and for the, then for, you do have to get a, a PCA or B audit for the first quarter subsequent to listing, as you would expect, but, uh, but nothing. Now you're public, now you're listed. Now the issue, of course, is having a series of good news announcements to protect your share price from naked shorting, which stockbrokers are allowed to do with gay abandon. So it's not just enough to do an offering and be a successful company. You have to have conservative financial management in place. So you manage your expense level and serious reserve making, which a great CFO will do. And I could train your people on this because I've done this stuff if needed. It's a cultural thing, right? To be ready to do to list and to be ready to perform where your company stock price does well afterwards. There's a heck of a lot of conservatism predictability, managed predictability by the CFO, managed communication to the financial audiences, and um, news announcements, good news announcements, because when the broker dealers slash stockbrokers out there are looking for companies to put a naked short on, because they can, to make a bloody fortune, excuse me, to make a fortune at your expense, if you, make a, if you make a series of regular announcements that are newsworthy and genuinely strong enough to bolster interest in the stock and in the company, 
they're going to go somewhere else, right? Not every company has that ability because of the facts. So bear that in mind when you're thinking about if you want to list, because if you are naked and flapping in the breeze and no news announcements coming for two years, the likelihood is your stock will go down and down and down until it's a penny stock or some horrific thing of that ilk. And then you'll be wondering, was it a good idea to do this? Okay. That's a whole, whole story unto itself, which I'm happy to train you guys on if you're doing that path. We did it right that we did it wrong on my first IPO. I was VP of sales for that one. And the CEO is a great guy, real entrepreneur, but he shot from the hip. He gave it and he gave the analyst community numbers that were higher than our internal plans. Things of that ilk that really made it made life very difficult. I was running sales, so I had to, you know, live up to these standards that weren't part of our plan. But uh, Symantec, we did right. The first the first 16 quarters post listing, we delivered better than our uh, public expectations. We beat the market expectations, 16 quarters. So our stock did wonderfully, lots of institutional investment. We were a darling of Wall Street, right? That's not casual, that's not random. It has to be worked on, it's a serious effort. Okay, so then, Evidently, it should be evident that uh, if we're doing a raise for a company that isn't quite attractive enough to get underwriter support to do a, a, a NASDAQ listing, then we raise the money and we raise the money over time. When we've got it, we do it, right? Uh, you can raise typically 12 million, 14 million is enough. The list on the NASDAQ can be less depending on the shareholder mix now, market value and so forth and so on. But we can, we can do that uh, and expect it to take some time. And frankly, the smart way then is that when we're attractive, then I go to bat on your behalf, assuming you're working with me, to solicit interest from the right broken underwriters. And we pull together, obviously I pull together a pitch with you guys. We pull together a pitch that's a good pitch on the company. I approach the underwriters we get their response and if it's positive which it'll be because we're doing it at the right time in the right way at that point then you and we negotiate a deal and that's going to cost 40k 45k up front typically to the underwriter to the lead underwriter and eight percent commissions eight and a half percent commissions plus warrants of the same face value to get them on board but you only do that at the end you don't do that prior to you do it when we are ready right? They'll want some payment on the money that's raised on the platform after they're involved. You don't want to be paying them that money prior to. And now is when we're attractive. So that's the sequence of events that makes sense, I'm sure. It might take nine months to get to the point where we're compellingly obviously ready out of the 12 months that you're allowed to raise money in the Reg A plus. And then go do it, right? The, under, the underwritten part is, is straightforward and it takes two and a half weeks to raise the money. That's their bit. It's very fast. It's straightforward.